Now let's look at creating a payment schedule. Okay. We did something like this when we were computing compound interest, right? When we said, all right, what does compound interest look like month by month? This is kind of the same thing. Okay. So this is called a payment schedule. This is also so sometimes called uh, an amortization schedule if it's for a house. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll list that later. When we get to houses, there's lots of extra terminology that I have written down. So we'll, I'll, you know, I'll introduce that later. But right now, let's just look out, look at this payment schedule. So we take out a loan. Um, uh, we can create this loan schedule to see how much we owe at the end of each month, how much we're paying. And you know how much that goes towards interest and how much actually pays down our loan. Okay. So let's suppose we're borrowing $30,000 at 6% interest and we want to pay off the loan in six years. Okay. Using monthly payments. Okay. So our principal is $30,000. The rate is 0 0.06. Okay. Uh, it's in six years. So T is six monthly payments. So N is 12. Okay. So if I use my payment formula, okay, so Again, if you have that finance app on your calculator, I, you know, I think that that's better than using the formula directly because you're less likely to make like a parenthesis or a typo error. But go ahead and write this out. Oh, I can hear somebody singing. All right, so we get a monthly payment of uh, $497, and if I round the nearest cent, it'll be 19 cents. Okay, and again, if I were to use my, my finance app, the big N, remember, is little n times T. Okay, so 12 times six. The interest rate, remember, to leave it as a percentage, don't convert it to a decimal. Okay, so we have to be a little bit careful about some of those things in here. And then I should get the exact same number. Okay, so this is what we're going to keep. And now let's go down and, and let's look at our loan balance. Okay, so if I wanted to compute this payment schedule, okay, I borrowed $30,000, so after one month I have to apply the interest. Interest rates are given as an annual rate, so if we're looking at monthly, so the monthly interest is going to be point, oops, uh, point zero 0.06 divided by 12, okay, and that comes out to a whole number, so we could write that out. But typically, when I'm, when I'm dealing with this, I want to leave it as a fraction when I when I enter to my calculator, so that if I had something like 0 0.3 repeating or something like that, that it keeps all the decimals forming and I don't have any rounding error. Okay, so for the first month, the amount of interest that we get um, I'm going to take my $30,000 and multiply it by 0 0.06 divided by 12. So I have $150 in interest. So when I make a payment, $150 of that goes to pay off the interest. Okay. Since I paid $497.19, $150 goes to interest, the rest goes to my, to my principal to pay off how much I owe. So I'm gonna take my 497 19 and subtract 150. Okay, so that 347.19 goes to my principal. Okay, so that means that my loan balance will go down by $347.19. Okay, 
So then I'll end up with $29,652.81. So this one was 497.19 mi uh, minus 150. And this one was 30,000 minus the 347.19. Okay. Now when we go to month two, I'm going to start with my last month's loan balance and apply the interest to that. Okay. So we take this. $29,652.81 and multiply it by 0 0.06 divided by 12. That was our monthly interest rate. So here I'm paying slightly less in interest, 148.26. Okay. So I'm making the same monthly payment each month, right? We're making this. Um, $497.19 monthly payment, but now there's slightly less interest to pay off. So I'm actually paying off slightly more of my loan, $348.93. Okay, so then my loan balance, I'm gonna take my previous loan balance, $29,652.81, and subtract the amount of principal that I'm paying off this month, the 348.93. So we get 29,303 and 88 cents. Okay. And just to make sure that we all got it, right? We'll do we'll do one last one. So my interest payment, I take this previous, this last month's previous balance and multiply it by 0 0.06 divided by 12. So we get 146.52 rounded to the nearest cent. Okay. And then again, we take our same, the monthly payment is the only thing that does not change ever, right? It's the same for each month. So I take that monthly payment, subtract how much of it went towards interest, and then the remainder goes towards my principal, 350.67. So then we take our previous month's balance and subtract how much we paid off and we get our new balance. So the initial 150, That was our $30,000 times the interest rate, 0 0.06 divided by 12, because that's our monthly interest rate. Okay. Right. And for the second one, it's the same thing, except we don't use 30,000 anymore, we use the previous loans balance. Okay, um, so then our last balance is 28,953.21. Okay, and you could fill that out for the full loan and then at the end, you'll get a loan balance of zero. Now, if I actually filled this out, like I made a spreadsheet or something and filled the whole thing out, the way that we did it, you might not get exactly zero at the end. You might get like maybe like two cents or like negative three cents or something like that because of rounding error. Um, and one of the things that a, um, a loan contract will do is usually they specify what happens for that last month. But it's, it, it's what makes sense, right? You pay off the amount that you need to pay off the whole thing. 
okay? Uh, you, you don't pay any extra. So if because of the uh, monthly payment, the last payment would make me go to like, you know, negative $12, you don't pay that extra $12. Your last monthly payment is just $12 less. Okay. All right. Um, so this is the idea of making a payment schedule. Now, when you borrow money, it doesn't really matter what you borrow the money for, right? It works the same. So whether I'm buying a refrigerator or a house or a car, if I'm financing it, this is how loans work, 